I'm going to change office again, I know, but big time. This one will be big change. So that's my work setup. Everything is okay with it. Big white desk, little bit too much stuff on it, but that's fine. Work in progress situations. Shelf with stuff that I'm not using in day-to-day -day work. This is another setup. That is gaming PC. I was thinking I will play more often, but since I moved with work to that desk, I didn't play a single game here for that's about two months already. And we have another room on first floor. This living room is mo empty most of the day. So, and I'm sitting with my work in that small room and basically we are not using this part of apartment at all. Basically, I'm sometimes I'm coming here to take a nap, but generally we are here maybe for about an hour or two in the evening when we are kind of catching up on some series on TV or something and then it stays empty. So yeah, I would like to have a bigger office because this room maybe it looks big on camera because it's wide, uh, it's wide camera, but check out. Two steps. Those are two steps in between the desks and I would like to move to the bigger place and I will move but I will need to choose what I'm taking with me and what not because two working desks I don't need them so that's changing I will need to choose which, cam which keyboard I'm taking with me this one is the best sounding one this one is the best ergonomic keyboard But today probably I'm taking this one with me because this one is the best low profile mechanical keyboard I have. And yeah, I will use this one today working from new office if I will sign the lease and you are coming with me. So yeah, changing office, moving to another city as well. So this city is relatively small comparing by cities, I don't know, globally, but come on. We have 2 million population in Latvia, so this city is somewhere in between 50 and 100,000 people living here, population basically, yeah. And uh, yeah, that make it city number four by size in Latvia. So I moved to this city about 10-ish years ago, just because it is smaller than Riga. And that is way more convenient for kids, so kids can go to the school on their own, they can go on the after school activities, basically from first grade, you don't need to drive them around. In Riga, that was total opposite. I had to drive around kids everywhere and that takes a lot of time and so on. So we just bought apartment here and lived for 10-ish years. But now kids are already grown up and I don't need those benefits from small city. Here in Yalgova, we have just one good coffee shop where I can go and work and that coffee shop is closing. They are closing their coffee shop at the end of this month. So I'm moving back to Riga. Okay, here is my coffee shop. I hope they are still open. Yeah, it looks that they are. Yep, it was the best coffee shop in the city. Unfortunately, it is closing. Look how nice it looks like. And yeah, of course, I realized that moving to another city, because in this one, the last good coffee shop is closed. It's kind of silly thing, but I don't know. Coffee is important, you know? at all of course is that traffic usually i am trying to have some let's say one big thing in the year and then maybe maybe also some also big but of course less bigger thing in a month uh, let me explain so if you are kind of i don't know getting a new job going i don't know have a kid marry 
you just generally remember that year, start new business, you know, you have something to remember in this year, but year is quite big kind of amount of time. I prefer to have something relatively big every month. Then uh, looking back on this year, you have something to remember how significant, something significant, you know, maybe that is a trip, maybe that is you starting new project, maybe you learning something new, basically something big every, every month to have, to have something to remember when you are looking back on this year. <laughs> this month and next month are loaded with big things. Actually, I will say it is maybe even a little bit too much. So in my, I started Indie App Accelerator community. I, in, I will do in the next week, still May, I will do my motorcycle license. We'll try to get that one. Also, I'm going now to sign apartment lease, probably getting a new apartment. So plenty of things going on. In June, <laughs> that will be also the same. So I hope I will get that motorcycle license. If not, I will keep fighting for that if I will get it. So that means I am getting motorcycle, hopefully, still in negotiations with my wife. I will get that new apartment. And that means moving. And then for India App Accelerator, we will launch one month of kind of working together, kind of active cohort based course and we will build application together and I will need to support everyone and pre show presentations, live streams at the same time while I'm moving apartments. That will be a bit crazy. And yeah, of course, I'm still working full time hours on my freelance project, consulting project. So basically, <laughs> I, ha I don't have any free time for, I don't know, gaming, fun, what else not. That's fine. I, I actually enjoy working. That's fun. I I kind of, I don't know. I'm not complaining about that. That's all, all of that is cool. But one thing I don't like, I don't have time to work on my indie applications. Yeah, I'm not happy about the situation with my indie applications. And that got me thinking that probably... I should start something like 12 apps in 12 months, you know, challenge. I asked actually this question yesterday on Indie App Accelerator community. Basically, what others are thinking about 12 apps in 12 months? I will say there was kind of mixed feedback. Part of the members said, yeah, that's kind of cool stuff because you are kind of shipping kind of a lot of applications, working hard on your indie apps and so on. And that's kind of cool. But another part of the members say that that's too crazy. Basically, you will you will be burnt out if you will try to do that. One of the members said he did that and got to the six apps and felt kind of burnt out in about in about six months. Totally understandable. Another comment was. So, yeah, you kind of can try to do those 12 ups in 12 months. Maybe you will manage to do programming for them, which is kind of questionable. And quality maybe will suffer. Probably will suffer because you have, you, you have to push yourself hard to get those 12 ups in 12 months. That's kind of crazy out. But <laughs> when will you do marketing? So that's a good question, right? Uh, when you will do all the other things? Yeah, of course, that's not possible. Probably not possible if you are working full-time work hours, have family, I don't know, and trying to have some sleep, then that's probably too extreme. But I think that maybe six ups in 12 months is doable because, hear me out, Because first up, of course, will be kind of, if you are just starting and if you are building your first up ever, first up will take a shitload of time. 
because yeah, you don't know what you are doing and so on. But if you already have some skills and you build one, two, maybe few applications, then you already have reusing, ready to reuse components. You can, I don't know, you have paywalls, you have some settings, screens and so on. You don't need to do all of that from scratch for each and every application. You can reu reuse those components. That's one thing. So I think that's still kind of doable. About marketing, if you are building your products for about the same audience and you are just trying to find good product fit for that market, for that audience. So marketing is kind of basically ongoing thing. You are just building next product for the same audience. You can kind of keep, I don't know, build in public, share your work, share your features, what you did, basically do some let's say basic level marketing. I will say that building public kind of sharing what you are doing is marketing as well. If you are building for your audience, so probably you will get your up on your audience rather. Uh, that's another thing. But most importantly, I think that there is saying that quantity leads to quality. And uh, let's, let me explain. Mr. Beast, in one of his interviews, said that if you want to be successful on the on the uh, YouTube, you have to make hundred shitty videos to understand how to make better videos, and basically you are you have to become better with each new video. I would say the same is applicable to the applications, and uh, yeah, of course, with applications. It's a little bit different comparing with video because with video you kind of make it, release it, and that's it. With application, release in the app store is just first step. After that, you can iterate, you can add new features, you can fix bugs and so on, improve application. But I still think that it doesn't make sense to release just one application and then ship 100 updates for it. It's better to release multiple applications because you are still learning kind of new things with each new application. And there was a very interesting experiment, Google, the parable of pottery class. Uh, experiment that was made in pottery class. One pottery class teacher uh, basically started to run experiment. He divided his students in two groups. And for a month, he said to one group, make just one pot or vase, whatever they do in pottery classes. And another group was able to, was allowed to make as many pots as they like. And at the end of the month, the uh, teacher judged the quality of pots and always the group which made those 30 pots, one pot every day, had better end result. So quantity leads to quality. Let's go to check that new apartment uh, slash office. And yeah, then I will tell you what I am planning to do with my applications. Am I going to do those 12 ups in 12 months or not? We'll see. That is it. The new office. I don't know, spacey. <laughs> so, this will be my day nap space. Comfy. And uh, yeah, I think that desk will be here. I could fit desk here like that, but most likely it will be like, like right here. What do you think? Sitting like that, looking to the window or sitting like that, looking to the wall. And check out this one. It's like piece of art. And yeah, there will be TV. And I am still in my kind of living room and kind of general space. And yeah, sure we have Few more rooms here, bathroom, what else? Not two more rooms. But this is my room and that will be the office. Do you like to see what I have with me in the backpack today? Because I'm working. Now I'm in lunch break and I'm starting to work right now. I will show you. So yeah, I have my water bottle with me, of course. And 
coffee from academia, coffee shop, paper notepad and fountain pen because I'm, I don't know, old. <laughs> I don't really know. But I like to write with pen and paper iPad just to use it as a secondary screen. MacBook, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Keyboard of the choice today is this one, Nufi, low profile Nufi Air 75 version 2. Then I have next stand, stand for laptop and mouse. Ergonomic mouse kind of helps when you work on glass desks like this one. It works just fine. Okay, and here we are. That's how it looks ready for work. So you have two screen setup. iPad can be used as a secondary screen. I have my widgets here. I don't know, simulator, what else? Not keyboard, notepad to take notes. My new fancy camera for photos. I got this camera to make my workflows a little bit simpler because currently, if I'm shooting on Sony, yeah, that's a great camera, you are getting nice photos, but I have, when I carry, carry it around, I have three different lenses. Okay, maybe one, but you, I have to choose which one I will take with me. Then I have, then I have uh, to process my photos after, I, after those are taken, I have to go home and edit them. From this camera, there is just one lens. You don't have any options. You're just making photos with whatever you have. And I can make nice preset JPEGs and get relatively nice photos out of the camera. So this is a little bit simplifying my Instagram workflow, less editing. I would like to have the similar approach in workflows. And uh, yeah, because to have space and energy to work more on my indie applications. And I really would like to do that one up in a month, but I'm realistic, so it is, it is okay to plan when you are just starting to make one application in a month, but when you already have applications in the App Store, sure, you have invest time in those applications, which already generates money. But I would like then do something like one application or one new feature per month. And that could work. Basically, I should do something new every month for new application or existing application. So I think that could work. At least I will try to do that in the June. In June, we are starting cohort when I will teach how to build in the applications and we will kind of start together from idea and we'll go to the App Store together and I am planning to do, to do participate in that as well. Will that work? We'll see. Maybe I will be too busy with all support tasks and so on, but I will try. We'll see how that will go. But I will keep you posted. So we'll see. Probably I will have one or more videos from old office because I will move back and forward in uh, next months. And that will be tricky to do live streams for that live cohort moving office from one office to another. But fingers crossed that should work. I think that will work. And yeah, this is not the best time to move office because all the ongoing things, you know, this uh, India app accelerator, also motorcycle license, everything. You know what, if you are trying to start something and just waiting until you will be ready, and you will have better time. <laughs> you, one day you may find that you are old and grumpy, like I am, and you didn't start with anything. So if you have something in mind, do not wait, I don't know, until next year or next month when it will be better time. Better start today. At least I'm doing that. Okay, see you next one. Bye bye. Ciao.